embryology, ovulation, fertilization, and implantation. Life begins within the depths of the male and female reproductive systems, where specialized cells called gametes, including sperm and eggs, are meticulously crafted through gametogenesis. Within the testes of males, spermatozoa are formed. In females, the ovaries nurture and release eggs, each promising the possibility of conception. The entire process of gametogenesis has been discussed in the previous session. As the menstrual cycle progresses, ovulation takes center stage. With perfect timing, an egg emerges from the ovary and journeys through the fallopian tube, eagerly awaiting the arrival of sperm. Let us now define and describe the process of ovulation. Ovulation begins with the initial stages of follicular development, which occur during the early phases of the menstrual cycle. Multiple ovarian follicles begin to grow under the influence of follicle-stimulating hormones released by the pituitary gland. However, as the cycle progresses, only one dominant follicle emerges, signaling its readiness for ovulation. Within this chosen dominant follicle, the oocyte undergoes maturation. Let's have a closer look. The oocyte is surrounded by a layer of granulosa cells, forming a structure known as the cumulus euphorus, which provides nourishment and support to the growing oocyte. As the follicle matures, it increases in size and develops a cavity called the antrum that contains follicular fluid consisting of various factors like hormones, enzymes and electrolytes necessary for the oocyte's development and survival. When the dominant follicle reaches its maximum size, it receives a surge of luteinizing hormone from the pituitary gland triggering the final stages of ovulation. The follicular wall weakens and ruptures, releasing the mature oocyte into the pelvic cavity. Following ovulation, the fimbrae, or finger-like projections at the end of the fallopian tube, sweep over the ovary, guiding the released oocyte into the tube. The oocyte is then carried along the fallopian tube by the coordinated contractions of the muscular walls. There, it waits for the sperm to proceed with fertilization. If fertilization doesn't occur, the oocyte undergoes degeneration and is eventually absorbed by the body. The menstrual cycle continues, setting the stage for a new cycle of follicular development and ovulation. Now let us assume this waiting egg is destined for fertilization. There are various steps that happen in the meantime for the sperm to reach the egg. The sperm propelled by their whip-like tails called flagella, travel through the cervix and into the uterus, eventually reaching the fallopian tube. Upon reaching the vicinity of the egg, the sperm undergo a process called capacitation, where they acquire the ability to penetrate the protective layers surrounding the egg. The outermost layer of the egg, known as the zona pellucida, is composed of glycoproteins that bind to specific receptors on the sperm's surface. And through a series of enzymatic reactions, one sperm cell successfully breaches the zona pellucida, reaching the space immediately surrounding the egg called the perivitelline space. At this precise moment, the egg's membrane undergoes a change. That's it! One sperm made it and the gates are closed so that no other sperm enters. The fusion of the egg and sperm membranes finally occurs in the ampulla of the fallopian tube, resulting in the mixing of genetic material from both parents. The sperm's head, containing its genetic material, enters the egg, while the tail and other structures are left behind. This marks the formation of a zygote, a single-celled structure that now carries the complete set of genetic instructions for the potential development of a new individual. There are specific consequences of fertilization that are worth noting. Firstly, diploid chromosome number is restored when two haploid cells having 23 chromosomes fuse together. Secondly, sex determination occurs during this process. 
If the X chromosome from the sperm meets the X chromosome of the egg, the resulting combination of sex chromosomes is XX and the embryo will develop into a female. On the other hand, if the Y chromosome from the sperm meets the X chromosome of the egg, the resulting combination of sex chromosomes is XY, resulting in the development of a male child. The third and most important consequence is the initiation of a process called cleavage, where the cells of the zygote rapidly divide into multiple cells. Now let's see what happens after fertilization. The development of the zygote into the fully functional little human cannot and should not happen in the fallopian tube. Therefore, it is carried deeper into the uterus for implantation. Let's go over this process. As we mentioned earlier, the zygote within the fallopian tube begins a series of rapid divisions, a process called cleavage, forming a cluster of cells called the blastocyst that continues its journey towards the uterus, which can take several days. Upon reaching the uterine lining, the blastocyst attaches itself and burrows into the richly vascularized endometrium, a process known as implantation. The cells of the blastocyst will establish a connection with the mother's blood vessels, allowing for the exchange of nutrients and waste products. Here's a little quiz for a deeper understanding of the concept. What is a modula? A. The 16th cell stage of cleavage. B. The mass of cells after fertilization. C. The mass of cells resembling a mulberry fruit. D. All of the above. A morula is a stage of early embryonic development. After fertilization, the zygote undergoes multiple cell divisions, a process called cleavage. When it reaches a 16 cell stage, it is called morula, meaning mulberry. What is the role of the trophoblast? A. To give rise to the placenta. B. To protect the developing embryo. C. To form the central nervous system. D. To produce the amniotic fluid. That's right. The right answer is option A. The trophoblast is the outer cell layer of the blastocyst that plays a key role in forming the future placenta. What is the main structural difference between a morula and a blastocyst? A. Number of cells. B. Shape. C. Presence of a fluid-filled cavity. D. Attachment to the uterine lining. Option C is the right answer. The main structural difference between a morula and a blastocyst is the presence of a fluid-filled cavity called the blastocystic cavity. The cavity separates the cells into an inner cell mass from the outer trophoblast. The inner cell mass goes on to form the three germ layers, the ectoderm, mesoderm and endoderm, while the outer trophoblast forms the placenta. The subsequent stages of development will be discussed in our embryology sessions. Let's move on to learn about the clinical correlation of ovulation, fertilization and implantation. There are numerous ways that these processes can fail or be faulty resulting in the failure of reproduction. Research and medicine have come a long way in minimizing these clinical issues and a lot more options are now easily accessible to most people. Let us discuss some of the commonly seen issues with ovulation. An ovulation refers to the absence or irregularity of ovulation, where a woman does not release a mature egg from her ovaries during her menstrual cycle. This condition can significantly impact a woman's fertility and her ability to conceive. Some common causes of anovulation include polycystic ovarian syndrome, a hormonal disorder that affects the ovaries, fluctuations or abnormalities in hormone levels, such as disruptions in the production of follicle-stimulating hormone, FSH, and luteinizing hormone, LH, can hamper the ovulation process. Another cause of hormonal dysregulation is hyperthyroidism or hypothyroidism. 
Moving on to the clinical anatomy of fertilization, the main issue is infertility occurring both in males and females. Low sperm count or poor sperm quality can affect the fertilization process and reduce the chances of conception. Sometimes women have blocked fallopian tubes due to conditions such as pelvic inflammatory disease and endometriosis, preventing the sperm from meeting the egg. And lastly, failure in the process of implantation can occur due to hormonal abnormalities as well as uterine abnormalities like fibroids and autoimmune disorders that reject the embryo. With that, we come to the end of this session. As we go ahead, we will study about how the implanted embryo grows and develops. We hope you had fun learning with us.